you very much. I call Julianne Ginter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the previous speaker, Andrew Bailey, uh, pointed out, um, some of the opposition parties, including Labour and the Green Party, are supporting this bill. And that's because it's relatively uncontroversial. I do think the officials did good work. But the changes that it makes are not fundamentally going to change New Zealand for the better. And I think that's the story of this national government, is ultimately they don't have the courage to take on the big issues that we're facing in the 21st century. And they're not doing anything about climate change. They're not doing anything about reducing growing inequality in New Zealand. Um, they're not doing anything to tackle the housing crisis. Now, in this bill, there's a tiny bit that's related to the Bright Line test, which is National's too little too late measure, a uh, very mini capital gains tax, which they've tried to use to curb the out of control house price inflation in Auckland. Uh, but of course, there's huge problems with the Bright Line test bill. This bill um, implements the residential land withholding tax, which is a method of collection for anyone who has little or no connection to New Zealand, who buys or sells property within two years and therefore um, has to pay the, the tax on, on any profits they made. But the real issue is that we don't have fair taxation on property. And anyone who holds on to a property for longer than two years won't have to pay any tax on it. And that's the reason we have this incredibly unbalanced housing market in Auckland right now where the vast majority of more new mortgages, new mortgage lending, is going to property investors, not to first-time home buyers. Um, we do have a problem, undoubtedly, with a lot of foreign capital coming in because uh, there's no restriction on the ability of foreigners uh, to purchase property here in New Zealand. Um, we are going to find out for the first time, after many years of asking for data on this, the government finally acquiesced and realized that we do have to collect data on it to understand what the impact is, not because we're opposed uh, to immigrants or people from other countries coming to New Zealand in the Green Party. Obviously, as an immigrant, I can say uh, we're absolutely supportive of immigration. But having a whole lot of foreign capital coming into New Zealand, bidding up the value of our properties is not good for those people who want to live in New Zealand. And so that's why we think that the sale of property should be limited to residents and citizens of New Zealand. And if somebody's willing to take the steps to become a resident, to become a citizen, then of course, uh, why not? You know, of course, they should be. We should allow those people to come to New Zealand and make their home here. But that's quite a different proposition to what's happening at the moment and what's driving up house prices in Auckland. That is a uh, consequence of a shortage of supply, uh, which the government is doing nothing about, um, and it's also a consequence of the fact that our tax laws favour investment in property, which is very inefficient for our economy on a number of levels. It's bad for first home buyers and renters, uh, but it's also just bad more generally for the economy, for growing a smarter, more diversified economy. Because if we have a lot of people investing in property, just buying and selling each other existing houses, that doesn't do anything to make us better off. Um, uh, interesting, interesting assertion from the Minister Simon Bridges there that it does. It does make us better off, just a group of people buying and selling houses. Show us your evidence. It's interesting. So the, the other part of this bill is extending GST to online services, and we can agree with that. That is rectifying um, uh, a, a, what, an uneven playing field so that New Zealand purveyors of services are no longer disadvantaged by online service providers who didn't have to pay GST here in New Zealand. And that's fair enough. At the select committee, we heard a lot of submissions in favor of this change, but we also heard submissions in favor of making the changes so the same thing would apply to goods that are bought and online, that GST should apply to goods that are being purchased online from outside New Zealand. And that's not impossible. Many other jurisdictions are doing it. There's really no reason why New Zealand should be lagging behind so far. So we support those aspects of the bill. That's the residential land withholding tax, um, you know, which will now apply to bright line test um, properties that owe tax because they've been bought and sold within two years. But in both of these cases, this legislation doesn't go far enough. With the bright line test, it should have been at least five years, not two years. Five years is what Treasury recommended. Most other OECD countries have a withholding period of 
uh, five to ten years. Um, I was just speaking with parliamentarians from France who say their withholding period is 30 years. So um, you pay tax on your property if it's not your ho um, home, if it's not your family home, and you, one buys and sells a property and makes profit on it, they have to pay tax. And I think that's fair enough. I think that makes sense. But unfortunately, this national government hasn't shown us the leadership and courage to do what's right I in this situation. Uh, the final aspect of this bill is enabling information sharing with Australia on student loans. And the previous speaker, Andrew Bailey, also spoke about this. Now, what effectively the government is doing here is taking steps to make it easier to track down people who have student loans who are living overseas who might owe us money. And look, fair enough, people took out a loan, they made a commitment to pay it back. The Green Party disagrees with the student loan scheme. I mean, we think it probably makes a lot more sense to invest in education, to have a knowledge-based economy, not to load up students with a lot of debt, which will make it much more difficult for them to be entrepreneurs, to start up businesses, to take risks when they finish their education um, with this big debt hanging over their head. And, um, incredibly difficult for them to buy a house as well, particularly if they live in Auckland. Uh, this younger generation is seriously disadvantaged compared to previous generations who didn't have student loans and didn't have out of control house prices. Um, but um, we could understand, and you know, we, d we don't support the student loan scheme such as it is, but we could understand and accept this particular change uh, which was enabling information sharing. But I would also say that the government needs to apply this principle much more widely. I mean, we're going to get a lot more money from multinationals who are currently avoiding paying tax in New Zealand if the government would actually take action on that than we are from student loan defaulters who live in Australia. Um, and speaking of information sharing, it's also interesting. I mean, obviously, we have a special relationship with Australia uh, because that is the case with um, New Zealand Foreign Trusts as well. With New Zealand Foreign Trusts, we do provide additional information to Australia when the settler is resident in Australia. We don't even collect the information when the settler is resident in another country, which makes it impossible for us to honour our tax treaties, our double um, tax ar arrangements with other countries, because there's no way that a country with whom we have such a treaty could ask us for the information about how many New Zealand foreign trusts have a settler resident in their country, which they might be using a New Zealand foreign trust to avoid paying tax or perhaps even more nefarious activities, because the total secrecy surrounding the New Zealand foreign trust regime makes it very attractive to those who are involved in criminal activities or who simply want to avoid paying tax. And there's no doubt that it's only the ultra-wealthy who are involved in setting up New Zealand foreign trusts in New Zealand. Nobody with less than $5 million would find it worthwhile to do such a thing. So um, while we're the Green Party is supporting the bill, you know, I came to Parliament because I believe that New Zealand can be a better country. It can be a country that is responding to the challenges of the 21st century, investing in smart solutions in a smart green economy that's actually going to lead to real prosperity for all New Zealanders, not just the top 10 percent, the mates of this national government. We want a fair, smart green economy that's good for everyone, and we know that that can be achieved.